In this Ellerton Associates Technology Training Tip of the Month, we'll be looking at creating a task from an email message in Outlook. Okay, I have Outlook up and running. And by the way, I'm using Outlook 2010, but what we're doing will also work in 2013 and 2016. Uh, slight differences in the way the screens appear, colors and fonts, and that kind of thing, but the functionality is basically the same. So we're looking at an inbox for John Smith. It's a account I have set up for demonstration purposes, and we have several emails, and some of them are asking John to do things, which would lend themselves to becoming tasks in Outlook. Now, when we're talking about tasks, I'm in the mail component right now. That's where most people spend their time. There's the calendar where we can put actual appointments that take place at various dates and times. And then there's tasks. And I don't have anything in tasks right now, but the idea of tasks is to track things that you need to do but aren't specifically doing on a certain date and time. You know, they may have a due date, but you're just doing them when you can get them done. So we can create things directly on here, but the point of what we're doing in this video is to take an existing email and make a task from it so we don't have to do duplicate the effort of creating a task and having that be separate from the email that's actually asking us to do the thing we're being asked to do. So to make this stuff work and be as efficient as possible, you want to have the to-do bar displayed on the right side of the screen, and I do. So the to-do bar by default will display a calendar navigator. It'll have your next upcoming appointments from your calendar and then your task list, and I don't have anything on the task list right now. Now, if this is not displayed, sometimes people turn it off. Let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to come up to View, and in View, there's a layout group of commands. I'm going to go to To-Do Bar. Notice mine is turned on normal, but I'm going to turn it off. So if you've turned it off or it was never on in your Outlook in the first place, what you can do is, on that View tab, click that To-Do Bar button and turn it on to normal. And then you can customize what's displayed. I tend to leave it at all three default items, but for example, if I turn off Date Navigator, now I've got more room on there and I can divide the space between them for the calendar appointments and the tasks. I just tend to leave it, as I said, with all three on, but that's customizable and up to you. But our focus for this session is the task list. So it doesn't matter if those other things aren't there. As long as you have the task list displayed on the to-do bar, you'll see what the benefits are of the things we're about to do. So I've got this. Let's, let's pick on this one. Kit's asking me to upload some stuff, and it should be done by March 1st. So that's obviously a task. Now, the easiest way to treat an email like a task is its little flag icon here on the right. And by the way, all versions of Outlook have the flag icon, but in some of them, you actually have to point at the message. Note that even though I'm not pointing at the message, and even when the other messages are not selected, the flag is visible, sometimes you actually have to point at it to see the flag pop up, but it'll be there. So what I can do is left-click the flag, and now the flag is set. And what did that actually do besides put a red flag? Well, look over in my to-do bar. In the tasks list now, I have a flag, a task, due today. So a left-click on the flag puts a default today flag on that message, and it adds it to the to-do bar. So now it's definitely going to be hard to forget to do that, even if this message is way down beyond the edge of my screen because I have so many emails and I might not see the little flag, but I'll certainly see it over here. Now, if I want to put a specific date on that, I can right-click the flag. And note you have some like tomorrow. Okay, the things now do tomorrow. You can see a tomorrow flag. Or if I right-click and go out to, say, next week, I'm going to right-click that flag and go to Custom because then I can add a reminder, and that's a good thing, but I can also put a very specific date on there. So the due date was March 1st, which is pretty far in the future. I could easily forget about that without this reminder to help me. But I'm going to put the to due date of March 1st right there. And I will throw a reminder on, and Outlook's default reminder is coming in at Friday, February 26th, and that's not a bad idea. It's a, it's a few days before this is due, and that's not bad to be reminded in case I totally forgot about it. It still gives me time to do it. It'll pop up at 8 a.m., so I'll click OK. So now you have the little reminder indicator. The flag's a little lighter because the flag is for later in time, and you can see these two up here, too. So now, anytime I'm looking at the to-do bar, and it's right there, so I'm probably going to look at it quite often, I see I have that item to do. Now, if the thing gets done, what I can do is on the flag here or over here, I'll do it here now that I'm on the to-do bar, I'll right-click it, and you can either mark it complete or clear it. If you mark it complete, it leaves the to-do bar, because the to-do bar is only for things that have yet to be done, but the message itself has a little check mark, and it even says up here when I marked it complete. 
So there's a little record keeping involved if you mark something complete. If I right click instead and just clear the flag, then it's like it never existed. It's both gone from the to-do bar and the message itself has no indication there was ever a flag on it. Now, that's a neat thing, but if I click this flag, I'm going to put a flag back on and I'll just leave it for today. Here's the one downside of this method, and that is the flag is on the message. Therefore, if I delete the message, it'll disappear from the to-do bar. So watch, I'm going to delete that message. Okay, now it's gone from the to-do bar too. So it was never really a separate task. It was a flag on that email. So the email's gone, the flag's gone. Now, what if you want to be able to get rid of these emails that have tasks but still have the task left behind? That's the next thing I'm going to show you. So here's this one uh, for website links. We've got some things we got to do to the website. We have a due date in there next Wednesday. So that'll be a good task. But now I really want to make it a task because I'd just like to delete this email. So I'm going to drag the email and drop it on top of the task component button which is usually in the lower left of the screen. Now, for some reason, my new task didn't pop up on top of Outlook, but if I point at my Outlook button here, you can see it's there. I'm going to click it. It should pop up on top, but I can get to it even though it didn't. But it popped up this new task dialog, and the whole body of the emails in there, including the header showing me who I got it from and the date and all that stuff. I can change the subject. I can set a start date. I can set a due date. I am going to set a due date because that was next Wednesday. And I can set a reminder if I want. And notice the reminders for the morning of Wednesday. I'm, I'm going to go to the day before because I think I should need a little lead time on that. And I'm going to save and close. So what happens now is it ends up over here in the to-do bar because it is actually a task. In fact, if I cared to look at my task list, you'd see it was there as well. But the nice thing about the to-do bar is I don't ever have to look at the task list. I can stay in email where generally people stay in Outlook anyway. But there it is. Now, here's the other thing. I'm going to delete this email. I just hit delete. It's gone but the task is still there. So now I manage it all from the to-do bar. I can always double click that and open it up. And by the way, when you turn the email into a task, you can even add more text. So I could put some additional info about these links. Obviously, I'm just typing that, but in real life, it'd be actual info. I'm going to save and close that. So now that's saved. So I can always open it up and edit it, change the due date, change the reminder. And just like with the flagged message, when this is done, I can right click the flag and I can choose to mark it complete or I can simply delete the task. That's what I'm going to do. So now the task is completely gone, but I've done it and, and I don't need any history of it. So those are the two methods for taking an email and creating a task, flagging it so that it's treated like a task or actually dragging it onto tasks to create a task and then you can delete the email. To learn more about our classes, please visit us at www.alerttraining.com.